Hello, hello, friends. Welcome. Hi there. Hey, Maggie. How's it going? I am working on the scissor case. <laughs> Fun. Captain Blackbeard. <laughs> uh, oh, the pirate jokes are my favorite. I think that's because I have an affinity for Fire Mountain's catalog, though. Like, Did I ever type in all those jokes from the holiday one? I don't remember. Anyway, today I'm having uh, orange sherbet and Sprite. Uh, this is the cranberry Sprite, the holiday one. In my family, it was uh, our New Year's punch every year was uh, orange sherbet and Sprite. So it's New Year, new stream, new day. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was left over from New Year's Eve. So I don't know, I'm working on this today. This is my scissor case for the Reginalds. I should probably get them out. First stream of 2022. Yeah, for me. <laughs> Everybody else has already like streamed already this year. Um, so this is going to be my scissor case. Um, it's in four pieces because there's going to be a front pocket for one Reginald. And a front pocket on the other side, and I guess back pocket, I don't know, for the other one. And then in between the layers, they're going to be side by side, is going to be the one in the middle. So it's going to hold all three. And it'll be a lot easier to grab my scissors without looking if I can just grab the case instead of like fumbling around for a pair of scissors. <laughs> I don't want to do it left-handed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm actually following instructions. I have um, Bead Point, which is one of my favorite books. Well, it's by one of my favorite authors. Uh, this is Anne Benson. She's my beading hero. She doesn't know it, but she's my beading hero. She also has a very teacher voice when you like listen to her videos online. Anyway, uh, this is Beaded Needle Point or what would look like a beaded cross stitch basically the whole the whole book of patterns on usually ada or like interlock interlock woven canvas um yeah so this is this is one of my favorite books i've been using it for my bead point projects working from a chart drawing on your chart on your canvas if you want to making space for big beads. I haven't done this yet, but I really want to. <laughs> suffering! No, no suffering. The year just started. We can wait. <laughs> Hiccups. Oh, how to prepare your canvas, how to attach thread, how to stitch, how to, you know, how to stitch. I have the hiccups, sorry. Combining beads and fibers and I don't know, finishing finishing techniques. <laughs> Which that's kind of cool. For under a mat, you just staple it to your board. Cool. I'm just all sorts of projects. Super cute. Little ones, big ones, every size in between. Like a little mirror. You know, these are very dated. This is going to be like late 90s, early 2000s. What year is this? 2003. So she would have made them in the 90s, pretty much. But it's all sorts of pieces. The one I'm doing is a scissor case. Well, sort of. I obviously went with ice cream because ice cream's way cooler than... Oh, the landscape's actually fairly fairly pretty. Uh, this is done in size 15 beads. And I didn't have size 15s. Well, in the colors that I wanted, I didn't have size 15s. So, and the colors that I wanted were 11s. And so I started with the basic chart. The size count of the basic chart. And I put that into easy bead patterns. And let me bring up my files. I still have the hiccups, by the way. 
documents, digital, graphed patterns, easy patterns, ice cream. There's my ice cream. So I had two, two of them. I had uh, the rainbow ice cream and I had, which would be like rainbow sherbet or frozen yogurt or something. And then I had the mint chocolate chip. So I charted that chart based off of this one, but the bead count is different because I use size 11s instead of size 15s. So I had to do some fiddling and I just started with that shape, the shape that's in the book. And then I started drawing in the basic shape for where the ice cream was gonna sit and where the cone was gonna sit. And I designed them both on the same night. Six channel points away from left-handed now. I'm not even doing anything yet. So my first year, 2003, really? Oh my gosh, really? Oh no. So you don't remember any of the Y2K bug stuff? Oh, you didn't have 90s cartoons? Oh man, I'm so sad. You were born this millennium. Okay. But yeah, so I made my chart and instead of the dots where I had put where I wanted the sprinkles, I did uh I did little Toho bugle beads, which are the size of actual long sprinkles. I did them on both, and then for the chocolate chip, hey, you behave. I did big tilas and half tilas for the chocolate chips for the various sizes. I think it's cute. I make it easy to remember my age. Yeah, no, like early 2000s, yeah. I have a niece that was born in 2000. Oh gosh, you're younger than some of my nephews and nieces. That That's weird. That's a moment. I feel old, one second. <laughs> you could, you could be a nephew or niece. What is a gender neutral term for that word? I don't even know. I was thinking about that the other day. Like I had a, I had a strange dream and I, and it made me like wonder what is the gender neutral term for nephew or niece? Like for siblings child, sorry, tangent. Um, I don't think there is one, but it'd be cool if there was. This is my brother's offspring. You know, but it's just kind of hard to say in a sentence. Anyway, where was I going? What was I saying? Toho's and chocolate chips. I'm working on this. <laughs> I don't even know. So I'm just half following the instructions in the book, which there's not much to it. You know, it's literally bead the thing. And then there's like a diagram of where to where to cut the fabric to like form fit the shape of the ice cream but like i'm going way more complex than the actual project so i'm kind of using it as a guide and kind of just making it up as i go i think i need to figure out what kind of needle i need though i know i'm young it's okay everybody's young though like at some point in their life right you just you just gotta be young at some point, and then and then you're not. Hey, <laughs> Queen Home Slice, how you doing? <laughs> Ooh, that one's pretty. Look, a purse. She 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 very much likes tapestry patterns. Like she has a whole bead crochet tapestry book, which is is interesting. On its own, I've always loved this one. It's just so cute and little, and I have no clue what I would do with it, but I just like it. You know. So like reminds me of McKinsey Childs with the <laughs> with the black and white. <laughs> when would you like to be left-handed? A little. Give me a little bit after I've started the project. So later, after I've started figuring out what to do. Right now, I'm just talking. I'm blathering. I'm not doing a lot. I do need to set an alarm for five o'clock though, because that's when I need to end stream, because I have somewhere to be at six fifteen tonight. 
It always happens on a Tuesday. Uh, the farmer's market meeting is tonight, and I missed it last month. I didn't mean to, but I was accidentally streaming during it, so. I need... Set this for five. Okay, so it's going to be a short stream, basically. Okay, then. At the start of it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I don't know. I have to, I don't know. Keeping, I'm continuing to flip through the book because I'm trying to like figure out where I am in this project. I need a technique section. Odd shape beads, prior to stitching, conditioning thread, thread and needle. Stitching technique, combining beads and fibers. What's the pun? Peanut bead allergies are the reason for the use of EpiPins in 98% of craft stores nationwide. <laughs> Peanut beads. <laughs> Reshaping the bead canvas before finishing. it can uh, get warped as you stitch which is what happened to my phoenix and I wasn't actually looking at this part of the book when I was I don't know finishing that up I should have I guess I don't know there's not anything up there that's going to be super helpful for this project so let me come back to the project page I'm on I actually saw somebody has actually beaded the pillow out there. Somebody out there has actually beaded the pillow. The chart is in the book. Isn't it gorgeous, though? Like, oh. I don't think they had, like, finished the pillow, but it was stitched. I just found somebody on Instagram that had, had it all stitched up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, no way. No way, Jose. Sure enough. Where is my project? There it is. Ah, got it. Okay. That's going to be open off to the side if I have space over there. Get my surface flat so there's nothing on it over there. And then put stuff on it. <laughs> Thank you for the Lurk Queen home slice. Alright, so I have a pair of my purple denim jeans. Which I'm very sad that these are now in pieces. Um, as 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 most women will know, um, you only have and these were Levi's too. You only have about what two to three years of life out of a decent pair of jeans before you get crotch <laughs> crotch catastrophes. <laughs> I get holes in all my jeans eventually. Um, blue denim actually is the toughest and sturdiest out of all of them. Black, if they're not skinny jeans, that is also tough. Um, and if they're not skinny jeans, blue is also tough. Anything with stretch in it is going to get holes in it for me eventually. And this has a little bit of stretch in it, you know, which is going to be good for this project. But it's the only, like, actual piece of fabric that I have lying around that I can back anything with. So, you know, the color kind of goes okay with this one, but is like super bright and annoying for this one. And, you know, I'm just going to deal with it. You know, I have purple scissors, so it's good, right? Like, just use what you have. Because I didn't, I've been in the craft store several times since I started this project, and I didn't really want to buy even like a fat square of fabric like what am I gonna do with all the rest of it like at all I'm not even doing anything I'll try to cut it out left-handed for you <laughs> jeez why why do you do this <laughs> I might have to increase the price of that one again if you keep at it um <laughs> left-handed I've got Fiskars over here I have so many scissors like I have 
these three, which is what these are. This is for. And then I have the ones that glow in the dark, which they might end up in there too because they're the same size as the others. And then I have my two Fiskers, which are for just all use crafting. These don't go to the kitchen. They don't live anywhere but this room. Um, and Ixo is great about not like touching tools that exist in this room only. Want you to suffer? No. You know, that just... Maybe I don't want to suffer. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> My brain is lagging today. It's okay, though. Yeah, so this is my backing fabric. That's uh, pretty much all I have. I think I probably need to like... Uh, notch this. trim notch piece as a template for lining and backing so I have to I've trimmed it down and I need to notch it and fold the notches underneath and then trace onto the jeans so I probably actually want to start with these guys because they're gonna be the pockets they're going to be front pockets and they'll need their own lining piece on this side. Oh, well, technically this side. And then, and then this combined with this will be its own shape. But with love. <laughs> Thanks. And then this combined with sh this will be its own shape on a piece behind it. And then I have to do the same for it the other side. Or, yeah. Ah! I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So, like, apparently the straight edges are going to be fine. I'm actually kind of worried about, like, all the beads on the edge just going, whoop, that direction. So I'm wondering if I should have like reinforced all the rows of the beads like I did with the phoenix, but like I wanted to leave it unreinforced just to see what would happen. And I like this texture better anyway. So I don't need to notch the straight edges except on the corners. be able to fold back. Okay, I don't know. Here it goes. Left-handed, huh? Okay. I'm gonna go at a diagonal. Oh, geez. Do I have to do it left-handed for, like, very... If I cut any threads, it's your fault. Oh. <laughs> this isn't fair. I'm gonna try to end each cut like a hole away from where there's actually thread in a hole. So like that. Oh yeah, that'll work. Hey look, went around a corner. Woohoo. What's happening? Jess, hello! Welcome! Time keeps on ticking away here. 32 months! Oh my god, it's almost like three years. Is it almost three years? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Time is so ticking away. <laughs> How are you doing this new year? All right, so I have your tree, but I don't have a box to send it in. I'm thinking I might just have to do a priority mailbox and just really, really nicely bubble wrap it. 
that way uh, it gets to you safe and you can reposition the branches once once it gets to you yeah this is on my list of things to do I just put it in my just put it on my list today of gotta get that mailed out but uh, yeah while you're here <laughs> I've got the willow tree okay I'm trying to make little tiny cuts to get this to wrap nicely around the corner here at the bottom. You can send it back in the priority box. I'm going to send you a reminder. Wrap it in paper. Okay, sure. Yes, I've made BP to use her left hand. Yeah, yes, Maggie has. They have uh, redeemed. That's all, what my, that's all my channel points are for anymore, is making me left-handed. <laughs> Take it, why not? But yeah, Wrap it in paper? Maybe. Yeah. I think I have some. Like, well, I don't have any tissue paper, but I might have, like, we have brown paper. We have brown packing paper. And I'm poopy. Have a bad head cold. No! Both COVID tests I've taken are negative, at least. That is good. I was about to say, if you have a cold, get tested. But I'm, I am grateful for your negative tests. I hope you feel better soon. I don't want to get a cold any like at all. So it's like, <laughs> anytime anybody's like, I have the sniffles, it's like, oh, get tested. Like, I have allergy sniffles. I don't feel bad. I just, I have succumbed to the allergies real bad this year. So it's like extra, like, anxiety inducing. So I'm just. Sorry, concentrating. <laughs> Aha, okay, that one's good. That one's okay. It was a bad typo. Don't even know what I was supposed to say. <laughs> it's okay. The reminder comment in my other post. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even know. You said you're out of it. So, like, it could have made sense to your brain. And then you looked at it again and been like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. Trying to fold back. To notch and fold back all of this extra fabric. Oh geez, these beads on the edge are like, why? Like I know it's the pattern, but like why? They're so poppy outy. I'm not I'm not used to like bead point at all, so like I have no actual clue how some of this functions she beats good streams to life Ding. <laughs> thanks blue feather hello welcome uh how are you today hope you're having a peaceful start to your new year a safe and peaceful start to your new year Maggie, there's not a lot of left-handedness going on here. Mostly just the scissor cuts. Kind of need both hands for manipulating this. Okay, so that curve isn't so good down there. So I need to do something.
Wahdan. Because I can't quite do it symmetrically because the holes come out of one hole. I mean, the thread comes out of one hole and goes down into a diagonal hole. So it looks good on this side because of the way the, the thread is coming out of holes. But like it doesn't on this side because if I were to cut in those same places on this other side, then I would run the risk of snipping one of my threads. Ah! Screams in pain! What? No! What? No! Don't be in pain! I know you can't help it sometimes, but don't be in pain. <laughs> Hydrate. Okay, thanks. Okay. So what if... That is fine. So it might just be a matter of when I'm stitching it, I'll just have to pull tighter to make that curve nicer. Because this side is going to be fine, but I might just have to stitch tighter on this side to make that curve happen. I need another another cut here though. There's some sort of adhesive I can use back here. <laughs> that and left hand. Well yes. Haven't really done enough lefty to stop. The good thing about Ada is cutting it is pretty straightforward. There you go. I can send that backwards. Now I should be able to roughly I wonder if I could paint the Ada from the back or on the edges. Or maybe if like brick stitching is going to be a thing that happens around the edge of the scissor case. I don't know. We'll see. See more gaps on the right on the left side than the right. So it's looking like on the back. My stitching on the back of these is like that's a good thing about needlepoint is it's fairly nice and even consistent stitching. It's only one thread color. You don't have to change threads often. Like I like this a lot better than cross stitching for sure. But <laughs> But it's the finishing that's funky. <laughs> Munching on a pot pie. I want a pot pie. I'm jealous. I have soup though, so I'm good. Technically speaking. Hi, Desky. How's it going? What are you up to, friend? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to back my pieces and do it left-handed so I don't like... 
butcher my beadwork. That one needs to be cut away entirely. Boop. So the other can fold down over it or under it, either way. Not too bad. How are you? I'm, I'm all right. I just finished earlier. I just finished my January planning. Well, actually winter because I, guys, like, I think bullet journals are useful and I do like being somewhat pretty in mine. I don't like going all out and overboard and like spending hours and hours and hours because that is not my creative outlet. My creative outlet is the beadwork. So I like being a little bit pretty on like a title page and like headers basically I don't do trackers I don't for the most part I don't do trackers very very specific ones for things that relate to the beadwork but like yeah my sticker is Elisa Milan's by the way I, I bought it well I bought the notebook to match the sticker and then that was the thank you card that came with the sticker and uh, the painting she did for me yeah this is this is what I did I got lazy I didn't want to do January and February and March separately. So <laughs> I, I just did winter. <laughs> Cause it is cold in March for us here. Somewhat cold. Like it's still spring, but also winter, it's weird. Yay, <laughs> I like you. <laughs> uh, but you're very pretty. Well, at least from my perspective. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Thank you, Blue Feather. Uh. Yeah, so I did this yesterday, and it's chalk pastel, so like it still rubs off everywhere, which is why I did the the dots all along the sky, so that if it rubs off anywhere, it's like you can't even tell, whatever. <laughs> so it's the snow, the winter, and you know, this is a ubiquitous winter theme that you see everywhere online, so it's like whatever. I wanted something easy. So I drew on it with chalk pastel and then I came back with my paint brushes and water and just painted over it and it acts sort of like a watercolor. Uh, I glued these pages together on each, either side so that it, when it buckled, it wouldn't be super um, bad for the other side of the pages if I still needed to write on them. Looks nice. Thanks. Desky, I ordered a weekly goal planner thing that I'll most likely abandon by February, but here we are. <laughs> um, my layouts have stayed pretty much the same for like well over a year. Like I just did January, February, and March all together with my priorities page. So, and I just filled all this in today. You know, it's mostly bills and when I stream and when I go to the farmer's market and when I have to like do math for finances and uh, I added a new one and it's uh, transferring all the files from my phone onto my computer because I just finished sorting the beadwork folder in my art file and I don't want to have to sort another 6,000 photos at once or delete some of them, you know, I don't want to have to sift through that again. So on the 10th of every month, <laughs> I'm going to transfer all the files on my phone to my hard drive and at least sort out the beadwork ones and any files that I've fully sorted to that point. So, Blech. yeah, just random stuff, priorities, try to set up new platforms, Patreon, Ko-Fi, Skillshare, YouTube, but at my own pace, not like make them super apparent that it's happening. Hi, Parley. Hello, Ministry. How are you doing? Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Miscellaneous stuff for like Twitch and things to send people and these are still the folders on my uh, hard drive that I need to properly sort thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, back everything up and mail out packages and pay my sales and use tax, which I did the math for that yesterday, day before, day before. 
And it's not due till the 21st. Ah, that's what I forgot to write down. Okay. <laughs> Sales and use tax and car insurance on the same day. That's gonna suck. I knew there was something I was forgetting to write down. <sighs> Joke. I wrote a book about seabirds once. My publisher said it flew off the shelves. <laughs> yes, it's Groundhog Dog in Twitch. <laughs> mm. <sighs> yeah, so that's my months at a glance. I still write things in occasionally in orange for when I have to be somewhere. Like tonight I have to be somewhere at 6.15. So I'm not going to stream until 6. I'm going to stream until 5. Maybe slightly after. But I need to get downtown. So then I have my priorities page. Which is just went over that. And then I haven't filled any of my expenses in yet. Because I ran out of time this morning. I have a... What I spent at Fire Mountain Gems yesterday in pencil because I used my Fire Mountain gift card. Yay. <laughs> what did I get? I got like black. I restocked black and I restocked red and blue. Uh, the brick red and the capri blue but a different version of capri blue because the one I wanted is expensive and not available in bulk. But also not available at Fire Mountain Gems either. Other types of that color are, but I have a color similar enough, so I got a size 15 that's silver lined instead. <laughs> and a few glow colors, a glow component. I think I got some thread. <laughs> yeah, and then I have my dailies and notes, which I like to do a little thumbnail of whatever the big painting was. That's how I did most of my setups last last year too was a little thumbnail of something relating to whatever the big color palette thing was and then I have my list for today and I've already finished a thing today before stream guys I'm so proud of myself it was filling in all the pages <laughs> and I have to pay my farmer's market booth fee which I just ran out of time and then I'll be streaming this scissor case so I'll mark that off and then I got to go to the meeting and then my next big project is the orange teardrop tutorial which man that's been on my list since like April and it's just one of those things that gets put off because I wasn't prioritizing things and so yeah and then sorting the art file the document folder and then whatever's not done tomorrow goes tomorrow and then we add new things to fill in the other six spaces and that's my setup I have no more pages after this. Uh, when it is February, I'll make a February finance spread on whatever page is next. And I'll switch pin colors because I'm using pink and blue. So like here's where January actually started. So that blue. And then I'll go from pink and blue to like blue and black or blue and purple, whichever one's next. I think it's black yeah blue and black and then when it's marked it'll be uh, black and purple just to keep with my winter colors and then when it's summer I'll switch out themes and colors and yeah I don't know. changing stuff up changing stuff up this is done in color pencil though it's not the it's not the chalk pastel but it's the same colors a little more intense with the colored pencil I really like the different colors in the in the and the words up here, I think that's cute. <laughs> but, you know, even though it looks simple, it still takes forever. I don't enjoy setting stuff up, but I enjoy, you know, colorful things. And I, I like doing some paintings. And then in my notes, like I usually do small doodles. Like here's a color palette thing from the other day. Here's a sketch of something I wanted to make a couple things from Hubble Stitch. Uh, here's a sketch on a note, sticky note that got put in here. I actually archived that. Let me mark that I did. 
put it somewhere. This was one of Ixo's ideas that I never got to. There were just so many for Christmas. But uh, little gift bag earrings. On the, the handles are the hooks for the earrings. It's cute. You know, I do stuff like that. Or I type in when I voted. I voted on the second for a local election. Uh, get business cards that people give me. Uh, this was a snack bar I had from my hometown. Uh, more cards and the packaging for the Miyuki beans from XYZ was super cute, so I decided to keep one. Thanks for the lurk, Jess. Uh, these are places I need to check back, check back in, maybe. Um, businesses I really like in the Austin area. Notes from people like Saren and like the lioness pen that I got and her cards. You know, just stuff. It just, it just stuff. I really like this. It's just, ugh. color palettes are super pretty. And sometimes, like, this happened last June. The color palette I used last June, I ended up using in a project for myself as well. And that's, that, that was one of the cycles I made for me was a color palette I used in my notebook. Where's my birthday in it? Is your birthday in the first quarter of the year? Look up January, February, and March. <laughs> Happy birthday or early birthday or belated birthday. There's a few, there's a few days already. March, <laughs> happy early birthday. <laughs> happy early birthday. Mine's not till September. I love my birthday, but I hate September. January is my favorite month, actually, by the way, guys. This, this is my favorite month. Because it finally decides to get cold here where I live. Finally. And people, like, generally stop asking us to hang out. And generally stop requiring us to go anywhere or do anything. And, like, when you, if you work in food service or retail, like, that's also when, like, business slows down and you get a little bit of a breather without being stressed out. Um, which doesn't apply to me this year, but has in the past. This has been, like, the least stressful holiday season I've had in a while. You know, COVID notwithstanding, but... Get in there. You should be streaming on it, so give you ten dates it could be. <laughs> hmm. Well... No, I only stream on Tuesdays. So, unless it's on a Tuesday. Unless, does, does my about me still say I stream on Saturdays? Because that's totally wrong. I do markets on Saturdays. Ah, where is my schedule? It says Thursdays. Oh, no. I need to change that. How? I don't know. I need to change that. Does it really? I am so sorry, guys. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Lies. Oh, let me change that. I think I was ambitious at one point. Let's take that out of there. Oops. I knew I probably had. Yeah, okay. Now it's fixed. <laughs> I do Tuesdays and bonus Blacklight streams when I'm feeling it. Not streaming on it then. I figured you'd probably be a Thursday. Thursday in March. So that narrows it down a little more. <laughs> I don't have a year calendar in front of me or I'd look, but.
happy early birthday regardless, ministry. Okay. I'm so terrified of like cutting the threads. My hard, my hard work. I've never used scissors left-handed before. Maggie, this is hard. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Even though I didn't say I was going away. I totally do that all the time. It's like, I'm back. Oh, wait. You didn't even know I was gone. I was in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. I've never used scissors left-handed. Okay, I think I'm done left-handed, though. Like, or again. Today has been a million small trying things. Oh, oh no. Has there been at least, at least one good, awesome, or mediocre thing? Because that, that would balance it out. I would hope. I'm sorry there's so many small, small trying things. I wonder if it'd like be totally fine if I nicked into those tiny, tiny corners. Maybe. I have a feeling it would be. Cut too much restart now. There is no restarting. That's the problem. <laughs> Do you like doing left-handed? Not this. Uh-uh. Not scissors. No way. Beating? Beating is fine. Scissors? Uh-uh. I don't know how to hold them. It's this inner curve that's like gonna be so hard to stitch around. Terrified. There's gonna be so many like teeny tiny fragments because Ada is very like flaky fabric. Now you know how I am every day. Yeah. is dumb. I don't like this. 
I did this to myself, guys. Like, seriously. I don't know what color thread to even use. What are you doing? Oh, I am... I'm trying to... Oh, come here. I'm trying to line... To notch around... Um, a more complicated shape than that. So that I can trace it onto this purple pair of jean fabric that I have to make a backing piece. And I have to do that twice, and then I'll have to make the inner pieces with those guys attached. So I'm making the lining pieces for the front pockets of the beaded portion of my ice cream coats. <laughs> That's a lot of words. But I'm trying to get it to where it folds in nicely so I can tuck under all of the parts to the back that aren't going to be showing. There we go. But because it's bead point, like some holes are easier to cut into than others because some have thread in them and others don't have thread in them. So it's just being a pain. That's all. It's just being a pain. And the way I charted it, I made it hard on myself by having increases and decreases in weird spots. So it's my fault. Okay, let's see if I can just get a rough idea of what the shape of this is going to be. And just like edge it the way I do other beadwork. So theoretically, this will fit right into there, but I would likely have too much Ada showing if I don't do it right. So I don't want Ada showing. I did the ambitious thing again. Guys, how did this happen? I was just like, this will be a fun, simple, simple project. <laughs> no, I am incapable of simple projects. Apparently. Okay. Gonna come over here. Why'd you stitch them separately? Oh, because it's pockets. So this is gonna be a pocket. For a Reginald in the front, this is going to be a pocket for a Reginald on the reverse side. And then there's going to be a pocket in between the two layers. For the one that lives in the middle. And maybe even the glow scissors. Because I, because I hate myself and I want to do extra hard projects. <laughs> That's why I stitched them separately. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm gonna trace with my charcoal pencil the rough outline of this and since the jean layers are together I'm gonna cut them out both at the same time Since it's a little bit of a stretch jean, I'm not gonna be too worried about uh, it being too small because there'll be some give.
see? So this will be the backing piece that I did backwards. I should have cut them out on the, dang. I should have cut them out on the wrong side instead of the right side. <laughs> Cause I want right side facing outwards, which it will do for this one. But it won't for this one. Dang it. You know, I'm just going to do this one then. I'm a bit quieter this stream. It's because I'm focusing on what I have to do. There's going to be so much like white debris everywhere from this Ada though. The thread is, oh no, it should be okay. It should be okay. Posture check. Okay. <laughs> Lurk, you're sleepy. All right. If you're sleepy, go take a nap or a bedtime or whatever you need to. I'll be right here. Do a few stretches in my chair. Bead of butter sale. Yes. Instead of bread and butter. Okay. Thank you for the points, redemptions, the stretch and hydrate, the posture check and hydrate. Almost the same thing. Okay. I think I probably need. to start in the middle because it's the most uh, dangerous spot. Although it might be easier to start on an edge. Start on a long edge, get used to it so that I can learn how to do things for when I need to get to the middle. I'm curious. How will, will a lighter work for fray check? Nope. 
It'll set it on fire. <laughs> There's enough cotton, not enough polyester. Lighter does not work for freight check. Okay, just checking. <laughs> what can I do for freight check? Mop and glow's good, but it takes forever to dry. I need to cut around this as I go, so not a lot. And come back and seal it later. Because I think I'm just going to whip stitch. The best quick dry is clear nail polish, but I don't have any. I don't have any. That's my problem. <laughs> I know that. Or product literally called Fray Check. Yeah. I don't, I don't have either. I used to have so much clear nail polish back before I used other glues, but I don't know. Elmer's glue dries pretty quick, but gets tacky. Exactly. Um, I think I'll take my chances. I don't know if I have any purple sewing thread. I know I have purple beading thread. I don't think I have any sewing thread, actually. I think the only sewing thread in the house is a... With an abandoned project of Ixos. Yeah, no, there's nothing in here. Ooh, that means Ceylon. Oh, this is gonna be a fun time. Mm. I think I'll use a beading needle though. It'll help. A junky one though. So I'll use the same thread that I used to actually stitch this one. It's purple. It's the same color as the lining fabric I'm using. Do I only have one purple spool? Did I use the other one? Am I actually making a dent in the sea lawn? That's pretty cool. Fancy. I used tacky glue to style embroidery floss, duck hair. It's not the best choice. Oh no. <laughs> what happened? That's blue. Oh, okay. Do I have a bobbin of this purple, purple, purple? Oh, for like your duck for, for husbo for, for Christmas? I remember you said you were making one. Styled it fine. It was just annoying. Uh, it sucks when a project product does its job, but it's not enjoyable to use. That's that's almost worse than being hard to use. Hey, I need purple. Where? Where's my thread bobbins? I think I need a place to keep my blank thread bobbins that isn't in this box. I think I used to keep them somewhere else. I'm gonna sort out all of my blank ones while I'm looking for the right one. Brown, blank. Teal, blue, blanks, orange. I miss my lilac KO. I swear I never used it all. It just disappeared one day. <laughs> I ended up using a mixture of ta tacky glue and some of my hair gel. Oh, weird. Cool. Weird. That does sound sticky, though. Even have some of these colors anymore. I'm just gonna keep a blank one for the purple, I guess. I don't know where it went. Well, keep those somewhere else. Maybe we'll be able to find things better next time. I don't want to do this. 
got a... I don't know. I don't want to use a sewing needle because I don't want the holes to be too big in the fabric of the jeans and cause it to fray more. So I'll use a beading needle. It's probably the most pairs of scissors you'll see on the desk because I have them all. They're all here. All the scissors. It's a scissor project. <laughs> all the scissors. I don't even know how I got so many. It just kind of happened. I, I know I didn't pay for all of them. And I thrifted the Reginalds in the first place. Come on. The worst part about Ceylon is it doesn't thread very nicely. The second worst part is that it knots easily. But I am intentionally stash busting with colorful thread so that when I run out of my colorful threads, I can buy threads I enjoy and colors I like. Start from the back in this corner. The knot should catch. Ah, come back. Ugh. I'm not using a tulip, so it's going to be a interesting struggle. I might want thread thread wax though. live a little over an hour and I do really need the restroom so I think before I start actually stitching this see I got a knot just by waxing the thread what the heck please don't give me problems today I'm gonna get up and go stretch and restroom and top up my water bottle I'll be right back I'll see you guys in just a little bit okay okay gonna run an ad break too see you in a bit
Ava. How are you? Happy New Year. 15 months. Thanks so much. I haven't been kazooing for people. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. <laughs> How are you doing? What are you up to? What is everybody working on? Appreciate your resubbing, Ava. Hooray, hooray. How is your new year so far? I need this guy. Uh, I don't know. Is whip stitching or blanket stitching going to be better? I'll probably just do whip stitch because I know that's pretty easy. So, oh! No, we'll see how this goes. I'm just using beading thread. I don't even own sewing thread. I just whip, yeah. I think I'm gonna whip stitch and try to come up through all the holes along the outer edges where the threads are exiting from anyway. I'll whip stitch the initial pieces. Oh my gosh, I already have knots. This thread, man. There we are. Whip stitch the initial pieces, the front front pockets, and then the back ones will be whip stitched around the edge, and it'll have to be back stitched around this because there's gonna be a full extra bit of purple for the inside of the pocket on that side, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then I'll brick stitch around the whole thing when I assemble everything together. I think this is how it's gonna go. We'll see. We'll see, I don't know yet. I'm kinda making it up as I go along because I don't know what I'm doing. That is half of what I do is I just experiment and cross my fingers. And sometimes it works out and other times it doesn't. The ones that don't usually come apart and turn into something that does work before, before I'm done with it. Every now and then I give up on something and just move on. Not super, super often, but every now and then. You know, it's just a thought experiment. Didn't pan out. I've got other stuff to make. Okay, let's go. Sometimes I'm super stubborn and just tough it out until something does work. That's, that's when you know that you really want to make the project. Okay, I might just go back to a regular needle. I, I don't like the non-tulips. Yeah, I don't have any fray checks, so this is going to be interesting. But coming back and brick stitching on top with beads should hide any bits that are fraying. Or maybe I'll mop and glow before I do that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Mop and glow is a good fray check, but it's a slow drying product. So it's not useful for like a quick fix. But this is working out okay. I'm really gonna love this project when it's done. I'm so excited. Who doesn't love ice cream, man? I've had this idea for probably two years at this point. I just never went and bought the Ada to like stitch it on. And then there was an estate sale a couple months down, a couple months back from a couple houses down from me. And the lady had a whole bunch of cross stitching 
supplies. Like, there were some hoops. There was a crap load of Ada, which I now have a crap load of. Which is in this cream color. And uh, she had some DMC floss. And so I picked up what I could there, and here we are. I started on this project that same night. And I stitched up most of the beadwork in like the following two weeks. Because my, my new start, my new starts usually last about two weeks before I like wear out on them. So unless I make myself finish, they usually sit and sit and sit and sit if they're not done in the first two weeks. This is what I've learned about myself recently. Because I had another piece around the same time as this that I started and had the idea for and the plan for and the layout and the photo of the layout and then it just never happened because I got distracted by this piece <laughs> instead. Even though I was working on that piece first. So, okay, there's a knot in there somewhere. Okay, I heard a snap, it's good. It's gone now. Yep, this is working just fine. Just making small, small stitches. Little whip stitches along the edge, folding the Ada underneath. Probably don't need as much as what's actually under there. I'll cut some of that back. Bigger scissors, smaller scissors. down too on this side so it's just not bulky underneath desky long-term projects can be nice but short term is also good for holding attention true true I like both usually my long-term projects or my bigger ones are the stupid silly funny ideas speaking of speaking of for those of you who don't know that I finished them. I have finished a long-term project. Do it on. Do it on. Do it on. Do it on. The truck door. The burninator is here. <laughs> so I finished him on New Year's Eve because I wanted a giant project out of the way before I started the new year. Look at this beauty. He's amazing. Trogdor, Trogdor. <laughs> so many beads. Saren got pulled out of Lurk with the Trogdor, showing off the beaded S dragon. He is an S and a more different S. <laughs> sure did. He's amazing. Yeah, and I made the sphere, uh, which is obviously not part of uh, the character design, but this is where he gets his glow power from. The original S Dragon. Yes. Yes, Dragon. <laughs> Which is what Ixo's been saying the whole time. He's like, he's the ultimate S Dragon. And he, and he really is. <laughs> Thank you, Saren. Look, he's got a little derpy legs. He can't stand up. Like, he just, he just falls down. Um, he was burninating the peasants. I have peasants to burninate. Watch. I have little people peasants to burninate. Rawr! <laughs> 
I mean, you watch the video and it says right there, draw an S, and it goes from there. <laughs> draw a more different S. <laughs> and so he has the glow sphere, which is where I started. And then uh, his consummate Vs are a little high up here because I miscalculated. So I added some more on top of his body underneath the arm. Um... I love the arm, it's so dumb. <laughs> well, Besky, I'm not sure of the provenance of those medieval peasants. They seem pretty modern. You know? They're 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 cosplaying as modern people. As people from the 70s. Um <laughs> back again. Hello, Ava! Welcome back. Um, but yeah, I made the S. I don't remember if I did the I didn't do the tail first, I did the head first. And so I gave him a jaw and I gave him pointy teeth using triangle beads. And his jaw still moves. Uh, he has the brick stitch fire. Uh, it's two drop brick stitch. I did a two drop peyote stitch chart. Um, at the top here, I don't know if you can see, uh, there's a little piece of elastic on this top bead which lets me move the jaw by holding on to the fire. Uh, the fire is stitched to the bottom of his mouth. He's got an eye, which glows. The nose also glows because of the thread. Um, his angry eyebrow, he has a V-shaped eyebrow. I wish I had a bigger bead for this, but this is the biggest I had. <laughs> um. And then he has consummate V's for his tail, which it's slightly the wrong shape, but you know, eh, whatever, it's close enough. Um, the arm, I didn't have any flesh colored beads all the same color. So I had to pick all of these out of my like brown bead soups. Um, my brown and peach bead soups, like I didn't have anything that's all the same color. So I, I kind of like it better actually. <laughs> And then I actually went back to RRKRA's Deviant Art for the wings. Um, this is actually her tutorial, which is I hammered this piece of wire on the inside flat so that it would somewhat keep its shape. It looks so great, I know. And it was hard to decipher at first what the instructions were saying to do, but it's tubular herringbone stitch. So this is two on one side, two on the other. So a four bead herringbone stitch. You can see it here too. All the way up. And then I went down on this side too, following like the shape of the drawing. And then you come back to the middle and this is a stack of two bead herringbone side by side. And then you start in the middle here, one bead. And then you poke through the herringbone stack, another bead. You poke through the herringbone stack, another bead. And you poke through, um, the tube and you come back around and you add more beads and you start square stitching them together. So I went here and then like came over to this side and then this and then came over to this side again and attached it to the body. So this side's a little bit wompy, it was the first side I did. This side's a little bit straighter. Technically there's a bit too, too many beads here but it's like whatever. <laughs> They're so strong. And so they mostly stay up, you know. There's a little bit of flex in them, but they don't they don't flop around anywhere. And then his feet are just a wire coil. This wire actually glows orange in the dark in the under the black light. You know, so the tail bits glow, the legs glow orange. I don't know why, but the wire does. <laughs> uh, same for the tips up here. Uh, this purple, this light purple, glows uh, kind of a hot pink. Very faintly, it has to be really close to the black light, so it's not super reactive, but it's somewhat reactive. Uh, his arm doesn't. Uh, the sphere glows bright ass neons. Uh, these Vs glow, it's the same color as the flame, which glows. The yellow does, the orange does not. I wish it did, but it doesn't. I ran out of glow orange by the time I got around to making the fire. Uh, his eyes glow. This purple glows, like kind of a pale pink. 
So, uh, because he started off as a glow dragon, and then Ixo had the uh, idea of, uh, why don't you make a Trogdor? And then he played the video for me, and I'm like, I hate you. I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> and so, then I started making a glow dragon. A Trogdor glow dragon. And then I made the blue guy. And then I abandoned Trogdor for a long time. And then, and then I made a sea dragon, which I liked a lot better because there's no S. I, I learned that I don't like the S part of these dragons. I hate this part. I hate this part. This is gross. It's, it's, I don't like it. Just, it, it's just, I don't like it. <laughs> it is a work of art. It is a work of art. I greatly enjoy it. But yeah, the S is the hardest part of the dragons for me. It's just like not enjoyable. Everything else is fine, but it's just this transition. It just, unless you have the right beads, it's just sucky. The Wevern style is a great design too. I haven't tried that one. I haven't tried any other dragons. There's actually a dragon, a freestanding four-legged dragon in one of the issues of Bead and Jewelry magazine designed by uh, Allison Terry that looks great. I might try him at some point. I enjoy the sea dragon. I enjoyed making him and I think it's great that he turned into a sea. <laughs> Or C is a weapon. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Okay, fine. I just meant for him to be coiling around a treasure that was going to be on the wreath. But it actually turned into the letter C, which is super hilarious. Just don't try to make a Q dragon. <laughs> no. No. Because it would, it would just, like, the head would wrap around the tail or something, right? It'd be more of an Ouroboros if it was a Q dragon. What happens with the Wyvern is you just use the same pattern the whole way through. Exactly! <laughs> I loved the C. It was just this part all the way through. Uh, where's... Where's my photo of it? <laughs> I took good photos of it, but I don't... That SD card is kind of um, not accessible at the moment. <laughs> anyway, I made Trogdor and... He can burninate the little people. I need to do a photo shoot of him burninating the little people. But I don't know how to get him to stand up because I made the legs proportional, which means he can't stand up. <laughs> I'll probably have to hang him from fishing wire, fishing line, just an invisible hanger, and just suspend him while I take photos and just have him near the ground, burning people. Something like that. Anyway. That's, that was the first, well, technically the last finish of the year. <laughs> and then I made myself my piece. I think it's just show and tell time, guys. Sorry, I'm not working on a project. Thank you for the follow, Susie. Welcome to the beatbox. I'm Vanishing Pearl. I make Trogdor. And I make ice cream scissor cases. And I want to show my other finishes because I feel like it. Oh, super recent finishes. It's just show and tell time. Let me get my tray out. It just feels like show and tell time. A uh, couple weeks ago, I made these. So these are end of 2021 finishes. Because I love this color palette. And I had uh, the picture of the old pair of earrings I made in this style has been up on my computer for like a month and a half now. Hi, Mario. There we are. Focus. Just a super, super soft palette. Ah, found her. This is the Weavern. Okay, I want to see. Oh. What? Look at that, guys. I actually like that one with the tail curl all the way. It does a little bit of an S right here. But I really like that. That's cool. The creator learned from RRKRA but doesn't make S's. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So 
The work is nice, though. Holy moly. Neat. Mostly because she twisted the tip before she kept working the sides. <laughs> it happens. They are adorable and pretty, and your C reminded me of them right away. I love my C. I loved it great. Well, it's not mine. It's Desky's C. Um, it's Desky's C dragon. So I made these. These are super pretty. And then this, I made them again in actually the uh, color palette Desky likes most. <laughs> Those are cute earrings, TQ. It's your wreath. Yeah, it's Desky's wreath. I made it as a gift because I could. Because I'm trying to remember to make gifts. Saren, I bought you your Ot light bulb off of Amazon Canada. I don't know if it's arrived yet, though. And then I made the same design another color palette. I made them both at the same time uh, using using the, the Vaporwave color themed beads that Desky likes best. Because I wanted to make two pairs, but I didn't know what to do at the time, so I just picked a go-to. It's a beaded dragon wreath. <clears throat> Gasp. Thank you. I sent you a message forever ago and you never responded, but I figured it was like holidays are crazy time. So go scroll up in your DMs. Yeah, so I made both of those at the same time. They're fun. They're super long. I made it set like this several years ago. Thank you. Thank you for the host, Liz. Oh man, yeah, it's probably lost in that chaos. Yeah, there was a lot of chaos. Um, I also finished one final Christmas item. I made, well, Ixo made the wreath out of DMC floss and hemp over a washer. So I finished that off with a cord and then I made a little bow, little bow to go with it. That's not as, as cute as my other bow as this one. This was my favorite Christmas piece I made this last year, but it's the same design, just bigger beads. So I made that. Pretty lost my kiss. That's adorable. Yes. And I've been making a bunch of Hubble stitch pieces. Uh, the others are put away right now, but the ones I just finished are right here. Look at those. This is Hubble stitch in the round. It's done, uh, it's three Hubble stitches in the round. So it makes kind of a triangular shaped cuff. Um, I embellished it with size 15s along for rigidity. And then I made this little super cute centerpiece. So I've learned that you can make beaded beads with Hubble Stitch, which is super cool. Um, and I use my two whole Montes. Hey, you, calm down. Give me. I use my two whole rose Montes for the sparkly bits. It still doesn't want to focus, does it? Give me. There we are. Beautiful. finished that and then I was following the like solar flare project um, the last project in the book uh, this is Hubble stitch by Melanie Day Miguel she is the discoverer of the stitch and the last project is beaded rivolis which these are some Swarovskis I bought on clearance as they were all being clearanced out by all the stores which I like the back side of this Rivoli better. Uh, this was my second attempt at it. The first one I took apart because it wasn't structurally stable. This one was structurally stable, but I wish I hadn't mixed up the colors. And I ended up turning it into a ring. So it's a cocktail ring. I can get it on this finger sometimes. I made it a little too small. I should have done another repeat or another Hubble or two. Super sparkly, yeah. I don't know this color palette I don't like this purple like it worked fine in Trogdor because that's the color that matched Trogdor but I don't like working with primarily this purple maybe I just don't like these colors together I don't know this this purple is the same value as the color of blue that I don't like so I think it's just that tonal range I don't enjoy but I loved this one. 
which was the color palette was based off of a Kia Soul that we saw in town. And Ixa was like, take a photo of that and try to do that in Beats. And so these are the colors of a car we saw in town. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the number of color palettes that I make that are inspired by cars. Now, this is super pretty and it's super dainty and I like wearing it. Uh, this is the only black chain I had. It was really hard to uh, snip it apart to get those elements in there, but I got the little beads in there on the chain. Hey, super cute, super dainty. I like the back of this one too. Reversible if you choose. And then the little glass pearl dangle. I didn't do a VP stamp. I could still stamp this with my initials, but I haven't yet, the chain tab. I forgot, it was late at night. It was like three in the morning, so I didn't, I don't like using the hammer at three in the morning. Oh, that came out really nice, right? Ixo color palettes are always great. Like, they always turn out well. Because I was struggling with this one, because I had beaded this one, but I didn't like it. And I didn't like the second layer of flare here. So I just did the first layer without putting a second layer of flower bits in there. And it was great. I have to say, though, that I don't like using Hubble Stitch to bezel. It's a pain in the ass. It's, it's just time consuming and it's not worth it and you're better off doing right angle weave like it gives a nice effect but I don't think that's necessarily worth the pain <laughs> I think it's great like for these little pointy triangle leaf shapes and I think it works great when it's woven flat like the other bracelet I have the winter bracelet and I like the snowflakes that I made earrings but those are in the garage I can't show you those but Dusky has some I like stitching it flat so I like this as a flat stitch and I like it as a flat in the round stitch I just I don't think it's the best option for tubular I think uh, cubic red angle weave is a much better option and I think right angle weave is a much better option for stuff like this which is why it's such a popular stitch, you know. But I think this is great flat. I think it's a fantastic stitch flat. And I don't really stitch flat very much anymore, so. And I have one last piece. I have one last piece, guys, and I made it for me. And it's freaking gorgeous. And I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's, it's finished. Let me set this over here. I didn't mean to like sidetrack and show and tell, but I have to show and tell. This one is gorgeous. Look at her. Look at how pretty. I got the little dangle on the bottom. And I got the little connector up here. And then I just, I just did a simple, simple beaded chain. I spaced out the beads a little further than I had at first. But the big, long blue beads were given to me by my mom. After years and years of me asking her and her saying no, she finally gave them to me and said, do them justice, which I did. And then I have a wire clasp. Oh, come on. You, focus. I've got too much on the table, sorry guys. I have a wire clasp, which is just two pearls. And it's just an S clasp. I gotta be careful when I'm like wearing it. But since it's for me, I don't mind so much. I wouldn't normally do that if it weren't for me. Yeah, such a gorgeous piece. Um, I think it's blue onyx, the stone. My great uncle cut it, he didn't label anything. Uh, he was a lapidarist and this is the last one that I have that he made. All the others I've used over the years. I like the color accents you chose. I do too, it's such a pretty palette. So the stone is from my great uncle. The long twisty beads are from my mom uh, that she gave to me, they're super sentimental. And the shell pieces, Ixo made. When he went, he went on a walk uh, around the lake back in, I think in November. It's October or November. 
And I came home from the farmer's market one day and he was at the kitchen table just with a file and saw and like power tools. <laughs> and he was making little shell components. And I just sat there with him and I helped him make some. And so now I have a little bag of shell components. And that night is the night that I designed the first part of this, that I did the layout. Because it was like, well, I want to use this bead. I wanted to use the bar bead first. Like, what could I do? What's, what's proportional or cool together? And my brain was just like the Uncle Lee's piece, you know? Do it. And I got it out and I put it there and I'm like, hmm, it needs a dangle. And then I got out the little tiny shell piece and I'm like, oh, damn. And so then I just, <laughs> whatever it was I was supposed to do that day, I didn't do it. I was... I was designing this and so these all came out of that and I laid them next to each other and just the other day I finished it and put it together tell you guys the Ivy Lee method works <laughs> yeah it's a, such a gorgeous piece and like I was wearing it on yesterday on blue so I finished it two days ago then um, I was wearing it on a blue tank top yesterday but here it is on my gray shirt. It hangs super low, which I'm not used to, but I really like. I think it's fantastic. It's so cool. It's so cute. Look at her. Look at her. <laughs> anyway, that's my show and tell. I don't have anything else to show off. Um, <laughs> So basically, I've been busy with non-inventory type pieces in the last couple weeks. It's been two and a half weeks so far of non-inventory making. Because we didn't have the farmer's market on Christmas Day or New Year's Day, which were both Saturdays. So, yeah. Saren, I think that's a great way to spend your holidays. Making what you want to make for yourself. Exactly, yeah. Because I wanted to make Trogdor to finish him. And I actually enjoyed making the last part of it. I didn't like zipping up the S part of the body. I I just, I, I don't like the bottom part of the body for S dragons. That's just me. Um, so I didn't enjoy that part. But I enjoyed greatly making the derby arm. Because it has, it has joints in there. Um, there's a little ball at the top. And so it moves a bit. I stitched it in a little more than I probably could have. But it moves a bit. And then this part wasn't super secured. So it moves a bit too. So he has joints. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um, I had a hard time with the fire. I tried to do a three-dimensional fire first. And I'm like, no, I want to do the cartoon fire. And so I did the cartoon fire and I enjoyed that. And then I ended up with the wings last. And I just followed the tutorial for that. Because if there is one, why not use it, right? And so uh, the tutorial seemed to line up pretty well with what the drawing was doing. So I just went with that. And I know, like, officially he has, like, the light green wings when you see him officially drawn. But there's, there's an image out there of him with purple wings. And I love the purple wings. So I did the purple wings. And so, yeah, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I made a crap load of pieces. Well, a crap load of bigger pieces. And now I'm making my scissor case for the Reginalds. And they'll have a pocket. So I'm making a pocket front piece right now. And then Reginald will sit in there perfectly, hopefully. Like it's the right size, but We'll see what the final fit looks like once I get closer to that point. Um, and I'm using purple because that's what I have. I don't sew. I don't make a habit of sewing. I don't have extra fabric just lying around the house for no reason. Um, anytime I do sew, it's a specific project. And I get only the materials I need, and usually afterwards I donate the rest. So I don't have any fabric lying around the house right now. 
not even from old projects. Um, but this is old pair of jeans. It had crotch rips because I've had them for two or three years, maybe four, and the crotch just eventually gave out like they do on all my jeans. And I was very, very sad and very upset. But it's such a pretty purple that I cut off the legs and I stuck them in my bag because I knew I had this piece to, to back. And so I cut off the legs and I stuck them in my bag to have some sort of fabric to use for backing for stuff. Because I only have like sheer organza type fabrics right now because I, I bought a bunch of that for uh, tambour embroidery. Here, let me get closer. So I have a bunch of organza fabrics for tambour embroidery, but I didn't have anything solid to use as a backing. And so I just put my jeans in there when they broke. <laughs> Cause I didn't want to line this with leather. I didn't want it to be super thick between the layers. And I was actually a little scared the jeans would be super thick, but they're actually pretty thin. So it's a great way to reuse an item. Yeah. So I need backing material anyway. Why not use the clothes that don't work anymore? <laughs> and we had like recently gotten rid of other things in the house. So it was like, man, I can't even go into the garage and like see what's back there color wise that I could just take apart and use for this, you know? So our clothes had already been recently donated, so I didn't have an option there. There we go. It's a little messy, but I'll come back and I'll use some sort of fray check. I'll probably use Mop and Glow because it takes a while to dry and I can't wait for that to dry on stream, but I'll come back and I'll Mop and Glow the edges. And then when I'm ready to sew all the layers together, I'll brick stitch through this again. Dusky, time to head out. Sorry, I can't stay longer. Have a great evening. It's okay. It's probably four o'clock for me almost. Yeah, it's your time. You're on a schedule, I know. I've only got about an hour left anyway. I'm not going to stream till 6 today. I'm streaming till 5 because I have somewhere to be at 6.15. I have to go to the farmer's market meeting. Well, I don't have to, but I remembered that it's happening, and so I'm going to go. <laughs> like, they're not super useful for me. They're somewhat informative as far as, like, the local politics that go on when you're part of... A local association of something so like I go partially for the popcorn moments of watching people bicker at each other because I think it's funny but mostly just so I know what's going on so when weird things happen I know to expect them to happen <laughs> you get any sort of group of people together and they're gonna fight so like if I'm there to witness the fighting then I know what to expect when like stuff happens the day of events you know i am a silent observer and usually if i do have anything to say it gets dismissed right away so i'm a silent observer that gets rejected <laughs> yeah it sucks but it is what it is Okay, this is my first curve, curve, turn, turn on this thing. I am going 
gonna try to hope this that the backing piece isn't too threadbare right now actually is what I'm hoping we'll do some extra stitches here around the corner just to like super secure it But I always start on a straight edge when I'm backing anything. On a piece that's bigger than the final, final piece. That way I can come back and I can, these scissors will do the job. I can come back closely, cut away the next section of what needs to be edged. And that's it like I don't go any further than that I just the next straight line or until the next curve and then I continue stitching my piece down and I do the same thing with back stitching so it's not exclusive just to uh, stitching fabric together it's all, it's all stitching I was just making sure to put extra stitches on the corners because Ada really likes to fray and so if I capture it with more stitches then the chances of it fraying when I haven't cut the piece properly is a little lessened. Yeah, this is, this is doing good though. This is sturdying up the piece as well, which is cool. it feels sturdier overall than it did just as a stitch piece like this piece definitely feels stiffer than over here which is good that's helping I'm worried most about the inner area here just getting it close enough to stitch down and actually stay down and not show too much of the Ada that's that's what I'm worried about because I want the pieces to fit together properly. Like I want this layer of the ice cream to fit here properly. But part of that is just my fault for doing a complicated, complicated pattern. <laughs> and now I'm paying the price for it. It's just looking at it and being like, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? I don't know. I think I need to shift positions. I'm getting stiff again. But I'm also on a roll. It's like, ah, oh, that sucks. Okay. Posture check self. Okay. It's looking good though. I love it. Knock that down a bit. Okay. I think my music is making me a little sleepy. I think I shall go and uh, change the channel. Then I don't usually like any other channels. I'm on the chill right now. Ambient is locked now. Man, they really did lock a lot of stuff, didn't they? that I use most of them anyway. Holy freaking moly. Let's go to Lo-Fi. I don't know. I'm just here. Well, I'm also like 
fidgety. It's probably a good thing I put the bead mat down because of all the little tiny specks of fabric. I can at least see them better and they'll stay put better on the bead mat than they would on the desk because I almost just like had the desk be the surface and I'm like eh, maybe a little something more than that I have so many bead mats now like I bought a whole package of them and it's like I went from having like three to six and it's like Oh, it's a huge difference. But like one of my little ones is in my travel travel case for shows. Which I always have a project, a small project in there that I can work on if it's not too cold at a market in between customers. Okay. Now let's see. It's always important just to go slow and do it right rather than rush and regret some choices. So I'm just going to fold back one of these little flaps I've cut at a time and trim the fabric a little bit at a time. So I don't have any re regrets. I get two or three stitches here because it's gonna have to be extra secured, I'd say. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> extra reinforcement. Saren, are you proud of me? I'm using my Ceylon thread. <laughs> I've been stash busting my Ceylons because I ran out of my favorite threads and I didn't want to buy more because I have plenty of thread. I am. <laughs> I have so many Ceylons and I want to get through them before I actually buy like a spool of green Nymo, for example. Because I have like four bobbins of green. I have learned patience with this thread. So I have two light green and I have two dark green. And in my bead shopping yesterday, I did not buy a spool of green Nymo. I bought other stuff. <laughs> And then I have like turquoise still. I have navy blue. And I have them in bags because they don't have the paper. The paper outside's like regular Nymo bobbins. So this is the only way I can keep them from tangling. And then one of these is black and one is navy because I was looking at them wrong. It was it was nighttime. But this one is navy, the little one, and then this one is black. So that's all, that's all of them. I thought I had another purple, but I might've used it up. I mean, stash busting is a great thing when you can, because then it's not in the way either. Exactly. All such pretty colors. I know that's the problem. That's why I bought them because it was just one of those big multi-packs of all the pretty colors. And I'm like, I have never tried Ceylon before. Let's give it a shot. And I got all of them. I have regrets. <laughs> I have so many and it's such a problematic thread it's so hard it's so tangly there's so many knots it's hard to thread on your needle but it's so pretty and it matches the colors I like to use so well so I'm just working through them patiently and then I'll buy more colorful threads of types that I know work better next time around like henna. Henna is a vibrant thread. I ran out of my pink. And I want more pink. Oh, 
I also have this one. I bought this one from XYZ. Uh, it's FGB thread. Hey, come here, you. Fancy glass beads. I would not recommend it. Like, it's fine, but it does this weird thing where, like, you're working with it and suddenly you realize that the portion nearest to your work is frayed. It's so strange because, like, it's fine one moment and then the next moment it's weak. It's weird. Like, it functions well enough and I like it well enough, but then the fraying, the out-of-nowhere fraying is weird. Um, it's, I don't know, about on par with the Miyuki thread, I'd say. I don't like the Miyuki thread either. I like KO, but I've, I have no KOs. And I'm, I'm on my last Sono, which is red. Which I could probably use this now, because I was saving them for cycles, but I'm not making cycles anymore. Well, I think there's like one personal, like that bracelet that I could use that with. That is strange. I don't know. Yeah, threads are, threads are weird. Uh, I prefer Sono. And I prefer Hannah. Those are my top two. I like KO, but I like Nymo better than KO. Could be your needle slicing through the, through at the eye. Right. Um, which tulips don't do so much. Like, I'm using a regular beading needle now, which that slices through thread pretty bad. Um, but I almost exclusively use tulips anymore. This was just close by today. And like, I just like to use tulips for beading and I like to use these for embroidery. I don't know why, I can't really give you a reason. But that's just kind of how I am. I want to finish my jeans from two years ago. That's the other piece that I use like regular beading needle on. Oh, those jeans. They probably don't even fit anymore. I've experienced that in cross stitch with some DMC threads. Really? Yeah. Oh, where the needle is slicing through. Yeah, some threads are just weaker than others though. Like that, that's all across the board for all sorts of brands and varieties and types. I imagine some colors of DMC are weaker than others. I find that some beads are weaker than others. Like matte beads are so much weaker than just regular opaque beads. So like if you're doing something like fragile with like lots of tension, don't use matte, matte finished beads. Just it's not worth your time. I do it anyway and then I regret it. <laughs> Cause I made a ring that had like two out of the four colors were matte beads. And then I wore the ring for like three or four days and like it broke all over the place. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Don't make rings with matte colored beads. Just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I think in the DMC, it's a combo of old thread exposed to sun, humidity, and also their types of dye. That could do it. Like how some types of dye are rough on like people's hair. I imagine some types of dye are rougher on certain types of thread as well. The eye made with matte beads. Won't make that again. So it's my personal eye. Oh, the dragon? The dragon eye? Minder? Was it a minder? Were they all minders? But yeah, like, and that's, that's a bit geometric too. So geometric work with like matte finish beads is super scary and asking for trouble. <laughs> Yep, all minders. Okay, I thought so. Let's fold back the next segment. There we go. Tuck it in as best as I can. 
try not to cut the working thread, but cut away the excess fabric. This inside bit is going to take a lot longer than the outsides. <laughs> if it put, I put mats in the S dragons. They are reinforced with transparent or opaque to make sure they won't break under tension. Oh jeez, I've made one all mat bead dragon. It's really pretty, but I had to be careful. I bet you did. Beads, 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 beads. Says Ministry. Beads, 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 beads. Yes. Don't, don't you like beads, beads, beads? Beads, 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 beads. Beads, 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 beads. Beads, 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 beads. <laughs> this is why I'm here to chat about beads. <laughs> what are you working on, ministry? Beads, 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 or bees, bees, beads? Or beads, beads, both beads, 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 bees, bees, beads. <laughs> All the beads. Why do you think my follow command is bees? Beads? <laughs> I really love that episode of Arrested Development. It was great. It just, it just cracked me up so much. And then like the lawyer being blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All the beads. Yes. I bought new beads yesterday. Speaking of matte beads, I bought new matte black because I'm almost out. Matte black is my black of choice. It's number 310, just like black in DMC. <laughs> what am I working on? I just say not safe for work? Oh boy. <laughs> Schmeckshy things. All right, I, I won't ask details then. I'm not doing anything fancy most of the time anyway. What else is going on? Because I have that meeting tonight. I have to actually pay for my booze fee this week, and I don't want to. <laughs> Lol. Uh, like we have a we have a COVID spike, just like everybody else, um, and the numbers are already like way higher than I'm comfortable with for where I live, and it's like, mm, but like it's my only income, and I haven't like gone out in three weeks to like sell anything. It's like, oh, do I have to? But the answer is yes, because you gotta make a living. I just, I just don't want to be around people because I don't trust anybody here. I don't even trust the people I like here, you know? Because several people I like have gotten sick too from, you know not making the best decisions. Or even making okay decisions, but not good enough decisions. And then they got surprised that they got sick. I'm like, I can't help you. <laughs> Go out in a plastic bubble, yes, and roll it down the street. Here, buy my jewelry, but you're on that side of the bubble. go out I just don't have to like it like even outside the only time I take my mask off is when I'm literally eating my lunch at the market that's it that's the only time I take my mask out in public I also keep one with me when I go on a walk out and about town if I'm at a park and there's no one around you know I might take it off but if it's a fairly busy morning where people are like all walking at the same time even if they're like way over there I still wear a mask just like no I don't trust you because in this town you never know who's gonna like stop and try to talk to you so it's like if there's 
a significant amount of people out. I'm like, eh, go wait. Based off of the clothing my neighbors wear, t-shirts wise, I know they're not vaccinated. And I didn't really want the proof, but it was right there in front of my eyes last time I was talking to my neighbor and I was like, no, get away from me. Because we had gone outside because there was somebody in the neighborhood is getting their roof redone. You know. And when someone gets their roof redone, it, it's just nothing but like uh, pneumatic, pneumatic nail guns all day long, right? And you're like, where is that coming from? And you go outside and like he was outside too. And he was just wearing a, a shirt that said the, uh, the only virus is the media or the only deadly virus is the media. That's what his shirt said. And it's like, oh, I'm going inside now. Bye. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Ministry. Yeah, I've heard some people like that. Everything fake. Can't force me to wear a mask. I'll see who and do what I want. Can't make me get the vaccine. Then they moan that they're sick. Like, pfft. sorry, dude. Like, in, in my case, it was a friend um, who took all precautions except the vaccine because of, like, conspiracy theory going down conspiracy theory tangents tangents but he did everything else fine but it's just a lot more virulent than that and he got sick anyway you know and it sucks and I really hope he gets the vaccine but I don't want to bring it up you know but like the second he knew he was sick and got tested his family left the house and he isolated for I think he isolated for like three weeks and he cleaned everything in the house. So like, there's some good stuff happening, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Even pe people you really like have weird thought process processes. <laughs> I did the math yesterday because I went and I looked at the numbers again and we're still like 10,000 people shy of the whole county being 50% vaccinated. So we're still in the 40% vaccinated range and it's scary. I've had COVID was mild, but really isn't something you want to have. I, I don't, I don't want it. I'm sorry that you caught it. Was this recent? Was this a while ago? Was it the recent wave or was it an older one? Yeah, I don't want it. Like, I know we're all going to get it eventually, but I don't want it. At all. Ever. But that's not guaranteed. So I do my best. And I, <laughs> I try to stay home as much as I can. And then I get fat cabin fever and then I go out and do one something every now and then. Or just go for a walk. Mostly I just go for a walk. Or I go do errands all at once. If I have cabin fever. <laughs> I'm boring, guys. I don't have anywhere to go or anywhere anyone to go with most of the time so uh, I don't have to really worry about uh, getting others sick or others getting me sick we got invited over to family things pretty pretty much every chance they saw to do something and it exhausted the crap out of us like we're usually homebodies anyway but man having to fight off the you want to hang out on new year's after we just hang out hung out on christmas multiple days in a row is is not easy <laughs> 
Back in September, spreading through the schools, my mom works at one, caught it from the kids, so ended up catching it. Oh, no. I see. And that was even 24-7 wearing the mask at home. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So older, so like Delta waves, that, that summer Delta waves that hit. But you took precautions and did your best, you know, that's, that's a lot better than didn't bother. Yeah, let's confirm Delta. Oh, I'm sorry. Where? See, this, this corner is going to be super difficult. But, so far, it looks like I'll be able to piece these together without too much problem. When I need it to be a pocket. Ixos outside of the house right now. He he was feeling too cooped up, and so he went. He said he's just gonna go entertain himself while I'm streaming. I'm like, well, be careful, cause uh, <laughs> this is the current case count. He's like, yeah, I know. It sucks having to balance, you know, wanting to stay safe with wanting to not spend too much time in one place. This is for a big pair of scissors? No, this is for my Reginalds. They're gonna be in this pocket that goes behind this piece of ice cream. So it's gonna be a front pocket to a scissors case. And the other side is gonna be the same. Um, I've got the chocolate side. We'll hold another pair. And then, um, these two layers are going to be stitched together with the top left open so that I can fit in a third pair down the middle. So it's uh, a lot's going on here. It's a pretty big project. Like it looks medium sized, but it's uh, fairly complicated. Yeah, staying inside gets to the point of doing your head in and just needing fresh air and not seeing four walls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think I need to, like, schedule myself time outside because yard work is done for the year, basically, or done for the season. Basically, until things start growing again, I have nothing to do yard work-wise, so I'm not outside as much. Technically, I should plant the iris bulbs I got for Christmas because they need a frost before they bloom. Um, so I have one thing to do, yard work-wise, but I don't have daily things to do like I do in the summer. Because in the summer, I go outside about 6 o'clock when the sun is still out. It doesn't set till 9 here. And I uh, garden and clean the shed and mow the yard and stuff like that but I don't have those things when everything is dormant I think I need to cut away a teeny teeny tiny sliver of this section Ooh, don't cut my working thread but I don't have those things to do in the in the winter the fall and winter times and so I just forget to go outside. And then like the sun is down and it's like, oh, I forgot to go outside today. <laughs> so my going outside today is going to the farmer's market meeting, even though I don't really want to, but just to be around people and to like observe other people. Cause I'm not really friends with too many of them. 
And a lot of them are super, super new. As far as they haven't been like doing the markets long, so I don't really know who a lot of the new people are. And I don't really get introduced to many of them except at the meetings, so I go to the meetings to at least learn people's names. And to see what they're fighting about this time, because they're always fighting about something. Golly, this is very fibery. Nothing here either, just wet and dark garden needs doing, but it's like no point. Ah, why no point? Just because it's wet and dark? You know, I don't even know what where you live, like what part of the world you're in. I am in Le Texas, Le North Texas. It is fairly warm most of the year. It is just now, it snowed this week, so it's just now cold. <laughs> it likes to be cold in January, which I appreciate. I greatly appreciate that it actually decides to be cold in January, but December it's always like temperate. It's like, come on. And then like that kicks my allergies into gear when like the weather won't decide what to do. UK, the island of rain. Ah, yes. I have only been in the UK in July. It rained one day, this is like back in 2010. I did a study abroad in London. It was cool. I really loved the subway system. I thought it was amazing. Because I didn't have to pilot a vehicle myself. <laughs> and then I spent five days in Scotland, which was even cooler. It felt like home. Scotland felt like home. And I'd never been before. But like, I have ancestry in Scotland, so I don't know if that was like making itself known or if it was just gorgeous. Either way, it felt like home. Just comfortable. And probably the only country I'd I've been to that I would want to move to. <laughs> Those are the only two countries I've been to, though, so that doesn't say a lot. But that's just strictly based on, on, on scenery and my few interactions with humans, which were all very pleasant. Also, that was just me being a tourist, so, like, nothing to do with any real life anything. Come on. Man, this is super finicky. I'm gonna be so happy to be going around this corner up here so that it'll go faster again. It's just cut so short. Yeah, Scotland is always cold. They got snow. We haven't. Really? Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty chilly even in the, even in the summertime. It's like a lot colder than I expected, but it wasn't bad. Our, uh, our bus driver had us all get out and go jump in the Loch Ness. And it was like 60 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe. So the water was colder than that. That was a bit cold, but not, not too bad. It was fun, though. <laughs> Yeah, 
and I haven't traveled since. <laughs> oh, my passport is so expired. Expired in 2020. Not that I could have used it that year anyway, but that's when it expired. It's just nice to have a valid passport, you know, just to pretend that you can travel, <laughs> even if you can't. Come on. Oh my gosh. If in the summer we get 80 plus Fahrenheit plus heat wave, we kind of die. Right. Because there's no air conditioning, right? Please don't die. Like, and don't ever let anybody make fun of you for it, too, because bodies acclimatize to where they live, regardless of where they've lived in the past. <laughs> so, like, I can handle 80 degree Fahrenheit weather just fine because of where I live. You can't because of where you live and the fact that there's no uh, air conditioning in most buildings down to humidity we get sticky heat oh no that's awful i have dry arid heat which is the preferable of the two i've lived in sticky heat i used to live in tennessee which is a very very humid state for the u.s anywhere in the east is really humid actually uh, but the southwest is dry I like the dry heat way better. I can go another like 10 degrees higher in dry heat than you can in humid heat. Blech. I didn't get this as tight as I wanted, as close up as I wanted to the beads. I'm having a hard time. Yeah, if we had dry heat, we could we would cope. Yeah, I bet. But because it rains so much, that just kind of sets you up for humid heat, which sucks. I'm so sorry. Please don't get heat stroke. Here's what the back of it looks like so far. Pretty tight stitches. Looks all right. Okie doke, okay. I can't add fabric. Oh yeah, because that's the only place where it increases here. Oh well. Just gonna do my best with what I got. I'm really kind of uh, kicking myself for how I designed the drip on this ice cream cone. <laughs> I should have just gone like straight or mostly straight lines instead of curving in and out a little. Which looks nice when it's charted, but I wasn't accounting for how I was going to have to line the pocket when I did that. Made this project way harder on myself than it should be. Is this the point of the project you go, I wish I didn't start this? Um, no, I just wish that uh, this curve was a little more uniform because it goes in and out a lot. And it goes in here specifically, which is what I'm doing now on this piece. It's just the in and out nature of the curve of the drip is what I'm regretting. <laughs> So I'm just going slow. I'm just taking my time. Cursing at it mentally, but taking my time. 
I've definitely made much harder projects like this one. This one isn't too bad. It's just finicky. Like, I'd rather do this than ever bead a rivoli with this stitch again. Like, eh. This was fine. In and out, in and out. Shake it up. <laughs> um, this round of beads here in the center for this uh, sparkly component, I didn't like making that. Or the other side either, because they're the same. But just, just making this initial first round for this bezel was gross. Like, I'd rather do this than this. So I'm good. <laughs> Pretty. Yes, it's gorgeous. I love it. But it's not going to be a go-to way to, like, capture stones and stuff. The flower kind of, like, the petals kind of alternate also. So there's, like, not enough space for them to lay flat. So they poke out in all sorts of different directions. Just slightly annoying, but not a lot I can do about that. So, but it's a pretty piece. I really love it. This is one I would wear. And it's pretty on the other side too. The back is just silver. It's a silver backing for the mirror finish for the Rivoli. But yeah, um, I wear a lot of red, black, and gray and white. Well, mostly just the red, black, and gray, uh, which are actually my high school colors. Not, it's not an uncommon color palette. Um, and I never have red and black jewelry. So that's something I would wear with a lot of what's in my closet. Like I have a gray shirt on now. Who the host? Thanks for the host, Maggie. Are you awake again? Did you have a nap? How long have I been streaming? I have plans tonight. Okay. I'm only streaming for like another 23 minutes. So this is going to be my beading project of choice until I'm done with it. I've actually just been working on one project at a time and I'm getting so much more done. So much more. Kind of. Yeah. I know that feeling. I go and I lie down and it's mostly just needing a break from screen time versus me needing to actually sleep. Sometimes it's just me being hungry though. When I get sleepy and tired. Oh, no. Don't talk about getting sleepy and tired and then yawn. Okay. I'm getting close to the top of this section. Maybe I'll have a faster time once I get around the corner. <laughs> it's likely.
trying to think of anything exciting I have going on lately, which is nothing. <laughs> I'm just trying to get back into the swing of like work week, which is mostly just stream and then do my meeting and then pay for my booth space. I just finished with my bullet journal layout for the season because I'm not doing month at a time. I'm just doing quarterly now. Like, I don't like doing a new layout every month, so I just laid out the pages I do monthly just once. And so, yeah. <laughs> Accounted for three months instead of one. Call it good. add in new pages as necessary if I get to a point where I need to. Hey! Rounding the corner! Oh, stretch. There we go. I want you guys to look at it while I'm stretching. It's looking nice, though. It's a little fuzzy on the edges, but, you know, Things happen. <sighs> Don't we have like an edging? One extra stitch here to like secure down that bit poking out. And then I'll trim the next section of the purple. There we go. So there's only one little bit of a pucker here, and that's where that increase um beads was. Not really too worried about it. It's fine. This is just going to be a straight shot across. Dun, 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 dun. Getting there. Super cool looking. Okay. I really love the texture of bead point, which is why I chose to do this piece in bead point, even though it would have been easier to chart it. Well, it's already a chart that would work for loom work or square stitch. It would have been easier to do it in either of those and just make it just beads, no fabric. But I really, really like the feel and texture of bead point, even if it does take forever. So I chose the harder the harder project because the materials had just landed in my lap as well as I just wanted to do it this way. And it's a personal piece for me so I don't have to like do the easy way because I'm the one using it in the end. Since I've wanted to make this piece for two years, you know, might as well do it the way you want, right? Two years? Well, I guess three at this point? Oh my gosh. Well, I'd have to go back and look and see when I do did the first doodle for it. I want to say it was like 2019, which, oh my gosh, that can't be true. <laughs> that can't be true. The idea for this piece can't be older than the pandemic. That's not true. It's probably true. I don't want to look.
I don't think I had pre-creased this side. Oops. There's the door. It goes back. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, this truck's outside. Unless he took mine. Sometimes he takes my car. Okay. There's lots of little flyaways. I think my Discord is going all beepity boppity boop. Beepity boppity boop. Fold over. Be nice. Wants to play games with me. I'm trying to keep the back flat as well, like as flat as I can without any puckering. So, like, getting this second to last side to stay as flat as I need it to is a little, little tricky. It's mostly the Ada that's tricky. The, the, the jean fabric has been fine. It's the Ada that's tricky. it stretches too because if I accidentally cut too close to something it'll have some give but also like it's very fly away so that might actually not be a good thing <laughs> we'll see we'll see how it works let's hope I don't have to change thread before I'm done edging this or whip stitching it. I'm not edging anything yet. There's like several layers right here in this spot. I think I started with fewer stitches and ended up with more as I went along. I don't know. Oh, it's gonna be a such a cool finished piece. I can't wait. What? Thanks for the follow, Crafty Kiki Pocalypse. <laughs> nice username, I like it. Welcome, I'm Vanishing Pearl. Welcome to the beatbox. Thank you for beating my friend. How are you today? If you're working on anything, 
I'd like to know. <laughs> Curious what others are doing out there. I wonder if I had like any polyester clothing. I guess I didn't. Those would burn. Those would melt. Let me be more accurate. Beading thread melts, which is why I, why I say that. I'm just using some purple jeans. Thank you. Happy to meet you. Good day. Oh, goodness. This project list is endless. <laughs> I totally understand. What, what do you prefer to be called here, if anything, for short? Crafty? Kiki? Either? Right? Yeah. Project list is endless. Oh, I have I have a whip command where I will stop what I'm doing and count how many whips I have. I haven't used it. <laughs> Had anybody re use it lately? So I have no clue. My average is about 50 at any given point. Saren, damn it. <laughs> okay, what does it say? 55. Is 55 correct? You asked for that one? Yeah, I did. It almost seems like your timing was like right on par with like it being spoken out of my mouth though. Like, like you, oh, like <laughs> you hit the command before I even said the words. Uh, pun. I sense a project looming. <laughs> okay, so this is obviously project number one. Let's see if there's anything else on my desk. I don't think there is. It's gonna be under. Okay. How many whips does Pearl have right now? She doesn't even know. <laughs> okay. So, two and three and four. Oh, wait. All right. I got to dig out the stuff. Digging out the stuff. I'm going to have such a mess to clean up after stream. This is part of why I only stream once a week, because I dig so much out when I do. Okay. So let's get all this out of the way so you guys can just see me quickly counting through my whips. I don't know how many are in here. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. 11, there's another one in there. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I haven't even thought about that one since the day I started it. 16, that was 17, right? 16, 17, 18, 19. I want to make a box for this. 20. 21, 22 patches for old socks, uh, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, oh boy, this is where it gets, <laughs> the numbers skyrocket. Okay. 28, 29, those aren't really for anything, they just exist. 30, 31, 32, uh, I'm gonna make those earrings or something, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, Saren, how dare you, how dare you air my dirty laundry, 38, 39, Forty, forty-one, forty-two, 
44. Where'd the other piece of this go? Forty-five, but this belongs to something else. Um, Forty-six. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Fifty. I love seeing all of these. Fifty-one. Fifty-two. Fifty-three. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. <laughs> 57, big ones, 58, just waiting for the count laugh at the end of counting, <laughs> it said 58, right, okay, how did this happen, ah, uh, lol, finished so much lately, how did this happen, okay, it's 58, <laughs> Uh, this, a lot of these happened. That's what happened. 66, and I haven't gotten around to this one yet. <laughs> uh, these are components, so I'm not going to count them. Because they have no plans. This is that one I was talking about, the other one going to. Uh, 67. 68. 69. 70 and 71, <laughs> 72, 73, 74, 75, <laughs> did I show it? Oh no. All right. I was going to wait for a bean page, but I got to do this instead. <laughs> Jersey project. Wait, there's... 75? 76? I'm really excited about that one. All right, so you're going to have to say 1 to 100 at this point because uh, we've already exceeded 50. Um, uh, I've got one more container back here. Okay. A lot of these are repairs. Uh, 77. Seventy-eight. And you you can request one too, Saren, like specifically. Like if you want to see me finish this. Because I started it for you. This is 78. <laughs> okay, stream's almost over. Uh, 79, which are buttons you gave me. You're so pretty. 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, oh shit, 98, 99, 
103 and 104. What the fuck? <sighs> Alright, Saren, you get a, you get a pick. Number one through 104. <laughs> Or a specific project that you want to see me finish. Crap, what was the number for those dark blue ones? The Druzy? I can do the Druzy. Because those dark blue, the three Druzy. Yes, okay. All right, well. Let me go find them. Let me also edit the fact that I have 104 whips. Fuck. I thought I was doing good. Like, and this is like everything. It's not just uh, things in progress, but it's ideas that have been laid out as well. <laughs> Ghost Ixopast is really going to kill me. I'm going to die. <laughs> All right, let's see that it changed. It would... 104, okay. Ah, those gotta be finished, they're beautiful. All right, if you say so, I'll finish them once I find them again. Camo, that's twice as many. The bot said, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Some of them are technically not started, started. Some are just ideas, but man, I wasn't expecting that. I feel worse than you guys. <laughs> Just trying to figure out how you more than doubled from the last number. I don't know. Like I said, a lot of it is stuff that's been laid out, not stuff that's actually in progress. But some of the laid out stuff is in my whip piles. So, like, the true number is less than that. But, yeah. Because you've worked on so many, and that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> I love you, but damn. I suffer from start-itis. Is there a start itis anonymous? <laughs> Let me get some of those out of the way. Is it in here? I think it was in here. Jerseys? Yeah, they're here. Man, and I hadn't given up on this project too. Yes, and we meet on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and every first Friday of the month. <laughs> hmm, that seems oddly close to your stream schedule, Saren. Seems oddly close. Is there coffee? I'll come if there's coffee. Well, you don't meet on the first Tuesday of the month, which is technically the day, so. <laughs> okay. So I gotta put away the other project and I gotta work on this one. But, also, my stream is technically over because I do have to be somewhere, but this is the only project I'm allowed to work on. What do I do? Because I can show you the sketch I originally had in mind that I've decided against because it's not going to work out. I've already tried. Really. Fake shock. Green <laughs> home slice. You know, I have star-itis with writing, so I can't judge too much. But my unfinished fit count is like 5 out of 440 fix. So, <laughs> sure, let's see the original idea. Okay, the original idea is in this notebook. I did actually take the time to sketch this one. Um, and I've made pieces like this. Like, where's my... They're in my expired Etsy listings because I've sold it. So let me find my listings real quick. So, I'll figure something out and I don't know if it's going to be a single piece or like old pieces it's inactive hey get back here so 
So this is this is one of the ones that I made. I made several of these. So they're all different, so this is a different shape. But that's one of the ones I made. I could just do more of that, but I have several. I could make a pair of earrings. I did sell a pair of earrings. Um, let me see what I have finished. There's one. I don't remember if I have one left or two at this point. I should probably just put a chain on them and call them done, honestly. Okay. So I have one finished, one left. And then I have a sketch I'm about to show you. I keep seeing a Y design. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do lots of Ys just because it hangs nicely in cleavage. <laughs> Honestly, that's what happens. But, you know, it's just chain. And it's just like this one here. So, like this one here. So there's these guys. These were done in a darker blue. Uh, this is the first blue I had. This is super dark navy, navy blue. Uh, this is right angle weave bezel. It's like my go-to favorite bezel because it just form fits to any shape. Uh, then I ran out of the dark blue and then I had this lighter blue which this one is lays a little more horizontally, which I think is super cool. Um, but for the big three, which is why I've never done anything with them yet, I initially sketched a piece somewhere in here. This is like one of those sketches I even posted on Instagram like forever and a million years ago. Um, <laughs> nope, that was the sketches for the little guys. So earrings and then the three necklace, but this ended up being too heavy. So I broke it apart into individual necklaces. Um, then I had a necklace and then a bracelet. I could do another bracelet maybe. Gosh, they're pretty, yeah. My sketches or just the druzy? Yeah, the druzy. They're just blue. That's why you like them. It's because they're blue. <laughs> they're super pretty. I actually bought them at a uh, Gem and Mineral Show in Oklahoma City. So, 31 Monday. What freaking year was this? Uh, December. It's like December of 2019? Maybe? I don't know. I never put the year in my bullet journals for some reason. There instructions for a piece. Where is a sketch? It's gotta be in here somewhere. Man, I never made the Ibex. I think it's still super cool. Okay, I have the sunflower, and that actually looked like that in the end. Where is my Druzy pieces? Aha, there it is, there it is. I found it, I found it. Hey, come back. Where'd you go? It was just here. Ha! Okay. Gotta zoom out. The notebook's too big. There we are. What about making a tassel to hang from one and then putting the other two with chains linked either side and ta-da! That would work except three of them together makes a really heavy necklace. Like if it's just on a chain, these three together are really heavy. Uh, this is what, like, this was one of them that I had in that three, three triangle set, like this set over here. I, I made this and it looked just like this. I think it was actually maybe attached with another jump ring here and it was super heavy. It was uncomfortable to wear. That's true. They're stone, right? Right. Yeah. So it's not like if they were plastic, that'd be fine. Um, and something like this is is fine when you use big heavy components as far as long as the whole necklace is proportional and the weight is distributed. Hmm. Yeah. Hello, Alea Pin Dragon. Make your stones using resin. I did not. It'll be lighter. Uh, these were purchased. I purchased these from a gem dealer in Oklahoma City. It was at a gem and mineral show. 
But hello, Aaliyah. How are you doing today? Yeah, so they're not resin, so they're not lightweight. They're not acrylic, they're not lightweight. Um, this is somewhere else. Oh, I need to end streams. Quite right. That's not the same one. Is it the same one? It looks like glue. Oh, this was um, this is a geode as well. They look like roses. Um, that my great uncle gave me. It can't be the same one. Is that the same one? I don't know. Yeah, that was the initial idea, and it's just too much, and it's not my style anymore, and I wouldn't enjoy making it because I've actually already tried to make it. And it's it's not my thing. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where to go with the Druzy. Like, they've been stumping me. These are acrylic. These are, these are plastic. So, I have some fake Druzy and real Druzy, and this is what they look like next to each other. You know, the fake is obviously much more vibrant. I actually have a bracelet of these together. So maybe having the actual Druzy in a bracelet right now wouldn't be the best idea. I don't know. It's just... I don't know what to do. Would you make the rose with seed beads? What do you mean? Bracelet would be pretty, though. Heavy, though. Yeah, it'd be heavy. It didn't seem to bother the last person who bought it, though. Like, as a bracelet, a nice weight to a bracelet is fine, but as a necklace, a nice weight to a necklace can be straining on your neck. Um, or at least for me. Maybe I'm just more sensitive necklace-wise. Let's see what else I have in here. I have these tiles. blue ones do I have left? Are they all the models? Oh no, here's one of the dark, dark blues. I thought for a moment it was a rose design you planned with seed bead embroidery. Didn't know you had a pretty stone. Oh yeah, no, it, it's an actual geode. Um, <laughs> maybe there's two left. Or maybe this is the one that, did I, did I rip the, because I had some felt on the back. I didn't see it earlier though. Let's see, I've got some jasper. Which, eh. Little black thing. Exclamation point. Um, yeah, sometimes you have good ideas and they just don't take for whatever reason. Yarn ball. <laughs> I also have a little blue glass tiles that are painted on the back. I've used these before. They're they're nice. They're fine. They also like are hard to beat around. You have to use size 15 beads. I just bought some Capri blue beads that would go nicely with that. Triangles and circles together are funky. I don't think I need this many of these triangles in, though. Sarah, you test me. <laughs> Let us think on it some more. And you said you have a spot to go to, right? I do. I do have somewhere to be. So I will have to end stream. That light blue. Yeah. But yeah. It. 
trying to get stuff back in the box. <laughs> it's not always easy. I have a new box though, so I can transfer stuff. All right, yeah, we'll think about it. Um, but that'll be my must work on this before anything else project. So finish a whip, I do both on stream and off stream until it's done. Usually it doesn't even take me until the next stream to finish whatever it is. It just kind of lights a fire under my butt, basically. What about... As I'm putting stuff away, maybe something will catch my eye. I bought these at the same time, technically. They're too big, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, everyone, if you have those channel points, we can help VP get that whip number down, right? Yeah, it's a... Only redeemable once per stream, and that counts for everybody. So, uh, yeah. Because I don't want to change whips a hundred times and just waste channel points. But, I could just put them on chains. That might be nice. I think I've got three. That's going to be the easiest since I don't have anything. Set, send a DM to. Okay, thank you. So, I can do little Y shaped necklaces with a dangle at the bottom. Someone's got a funky bead with these vintage chains. Those chains match perfect. They do. So, that's, that's where I'm leaning right now. Just the get it done, get it out of the way. Uh, this one's rusty though. Let's see if they're, cause these are so old that parts of them are rusty and I don't want to end up selling anything to anybody that has a rusty chain. I salvage the parts that aren't rusty, but some of them are a little bit fragile. We got, my mom and I got these at Goodwill back when I was in high school. That, I can just change the jump rings on the end. And the dark blue, I haven't really used a lot of. Ah. That one's nice. Obviously, because I have so many. The white, I, I ran out of a long time ago. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that's the current plan is to make... this dangle style centerpiece with these blue guys. So not just this on a chain, but basically a little more complicated than just this on a chain. <laughs> and I will buy one when it's done. Really? <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Rust adds character and it'll decorate my room more than be worn. Well, I generally don't mind rust either, but like, look at this. Okay, so here's here's a rusty bit. Like, it's fragile rust. It's it's like actually metal fatigued. Yeah. So, um, and I only did that because I know it does that. You know, not the same. Not the same as tarnish. This is actual eaten through the metal rust. Like I said, they are vintage. They are very, very old. So I make sure that the chains are intact and then and then I make a piece from it. Okay. Oh, what time is it? Is that rose up there? No, I guess not. But yeah, not the same, not the same kind of thing. This is a little dangerous. So yeah, I'll just make some more pendants. I just have lots of jersey, like they do sell. So 
I won't be too upset. Or maybe I can make one and then a pair of earrings again. But they're kind of heavy, which is why it took so long for them to sell. So like, yeah, no, just necklaces. I can do that. And they're a little more royal blue than the navy that's on here, but they're still a blue that matches more of the inside than the outside beads. So that's the plan. I'll stick with it. Thanks for helping design them, Saren. <laughs> right, I don't even know who's live right now, but I do either have to raid or just stop streaming because I have to go get ready for thing. Okay, before I waste any more time, <laughs> I think I'm just going to end stream today just because I have somewhere to be and I don't want to get caught up in, like, conversation. Um, as far as rating and running goes, it still takes me a little time if I end up rating somebody, so I don't normally just not, not raid, but... Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for watching my progress on the scissor case for the Reginalds. They're going to have a nice, happy home. We use front pocket. It's coming along. I'm super happy. The whip command tends to interrupt plans. A little, yes, posture check and hydrate before I go. Thank you, Maggie. Sit up straight, everybody hydrate. Bye, Queen Home Slice, love you. But yeah, <laughs> Saren's keeping me accountable. Dang. It's cause I it's cause I finished Trogdor, isn't it? Before before I was supposed to. So you're making me finish other projects. <laughs> I was supposed to finish him when you when you finished your hundredth dragon or was working on your hundredth dragon, but I finished him before then, so you're making me make other stuff. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Alright, for real. Thank you everybody. I will beat you later. We're just gonna end. And I will catch you next week. And in the meantime, I'll see you around in Discord and such. <laughs> I'll throw down the Discord for anybody lurking. You have a great night and see you again. Okay, bye. See you next week. All right, where is my rate? Uh, end button. I'm just going to end. Okay, bye. <laughs> Oops. <laughs>